Welcome back to Empowerment Nursing. I'm Linda and this is Ashley and you've joined us for our series In the Know where we make it simple. Today we're going to simplify the Glasgow Coma Scale. We are super excited about today and that's because the Glasgow Coma Scale is the number one measure of level of consciousness in a patient. Um, so it's something that every nursing student should come across in their degree. And it's also something pretty daunting to a lot of students because it's a table, it has a whole bunch of different sections, there's a whole bunch of different numbers and responses, and it's pretty overwhelming for individuals to memorize. The good news is, is that we have an awesome way to simplify it that's going to take the task of memorizing this scale and cut it right in half. In fact, almost directly in half for you. So we're going to swap right now to our drawing and we're going to demonstrate how you can properly memorize this scale. It's important to note that if you're writing the NCLEX, you will need to be able to take out a sheet of paper and recite this line for line for line. Pardon us for a moment here. <laughs> <laughs> if you are writing the NCLEX PN or the CPNRE exam, you will not have to memorize this line for line for line, but you may be required to make decisions based on a number in the scale, understanding the scale, and being able to apply that to situations. The good news is, super awesome way to memorize it. So the very first step in memorizing this scale is to memorize EVM456. You're probably wondering what it is I'm talking about right now. And I'm talking about E, V, M, eye response, verbal response, motor response, and four, five, six, four possible points, five possible points, six possible points. The reason why it's so much easier to memorize this scale if you can memorize E, V, M, four, five, six, is because our brain actually works better with codes hence why we memorize phone numbers in three and four subsequent digits. So an, another trick to memorize EVM is every vehicle moves, EVM. Eye response, verbal response, motor response. So what we're talking about is the eye response of the body in a patient with altered level of consciousness, the verbal response of that patient and the motor response, and this is going to give us a score on the Glasgow Coma Scale. Why does four, five, six matter? That's because in the I response, you can score one, two, three, four total points. In the verbal response, you can score one, two, three, four, five total points. And in the motor response, of course, you can score one, two, three, four, five, six total points. So just by knowing E, V, M, four, five, six, we've already cut down our memorization. Now, the awesome news about memorizing these one through four, one through five, and one through six is that they have a lot of things in common. Those things in common are that in the one point category on all of these, you score very few points or only one point for no response whatsoever. And this is the exact same for every single category. So one point for verbal is no response and one point for motor is no response. The maximum amount of points in each category is for a normal response. So you can see how we're already filling this in quite quickly, normal response. And I'll discuss what that is as we go through each individual category. Normal response. And that should make sense because the higher the score, the more, um, orientated the patient is or the better their Glasgow Coma Scale will be. So let's talk first about the I response. So in the I response we can score four points. One point or the least amount we can score is for no response. That means your patient does not open their eyes under any circumstances. Two points would be scored if the patient responds to pain. So if you elicit pain on the patient and they open their eyes they're going to score two points. Three points would be if your patient opens their eyes to your voice. So that would mean you walk and you say to the patient, hey, so-and-so, open your eyes, and they do, score, do so, that would score them three points. A normal response would be, or four points, would be if you walk in the room and they open their eyes to your presence. So a normal um, eye response on behalf of the patient. So you can see how one through four progressively gets better or scores more points. Moving down to the verbal response, one is always no response. The maximum points is always a normal response. So one step better than no response would be making sounds. So uh, meh, 
E, not words, but only sounds. That would score two points in a verbal response of the patient. One step better than that would be the patient's ability to say words. This isn't sentences. They're simply saying dog, cat, ball, not putting any words together. This would be sentences. So if the patient is able to put words together, but it's not orientated, it's not making sense, but they're making phrases or saying sentences, that would score four points. Now it's easy to fill these three points in because making sounds is better than making nothing, saying words is better than sounds, and saying sentences is better than just saying words, right? But normal response or orientated speech where the patient can have a conversation with you would score the maximum five points. Now, motor response is a little bit more difficult. One is always no response. Six is always a normal response. And the in-between for motor response goes like this. Abnormal extension scores two points. One step better than that would be abnormal flexion scoring three points. One step better than that would be withdrawing to stimulus. So there's a reaction on a part of the motor response of the patient or movement of the body. And five would be responding to pain. And six would be a normal response. So if you said to your patient, hey, can you lift up your legs? They would be able to lift up their legs. So that would be normal. So just to highlight again how easy this is to memorize, I'm just going to switch to red here. Oh, or I'm going to switch it off. There we go. If you can remember E, V, M, four, five, six, that's the very first thing you do. You write your one, two, three, four possible points, one, two, three, four, five possible points, and your six possible points here. You fill in your no response and your normal responses, and you literally only have to know those in between parts. And they get better as you score more points. So it makes rational sense and it literally cuts your memorization in half. So Linda's going to talk about how we interpret this now. So again, as Ashley said, the number one measure of the level of consciousness is the Glasgow Coma Scale. And we use it in an attempt to measure deterioration or improvement in condition of our patient. So the higher the score, the higher the level of consciousness so three, for instance, is the worst score, right? If you added the ones up, it would be three of no response. 15 is the best score because four plus five plus six is 15. So 13 to 15 is okay. If you have a patient who's scoring nine to 12, we're gonna watch closely. And less than eight, we intubate. And so that is how we're going to interpret this score. And it's very important to be able to redraw this um, so that you can answer a question that's just simply asking what the Glasgow Coma Scale would be based on the symptoms that you're given in a question. So we certainly hope this has helped you simplify the Glasgow Coma Scale, taking that memorization component down from about 25 things into less than half of that, making rational sense. It just takes practice. So thank you so much for joining us today on In the Know with Empowerment Nursing. And for the rest, um, for more information on our complete study package, um, feel free to check us out on our Facebook page as well as our website. Bye for now. See you next time in the know.